Hey everyone, good morning. Thank you for joining us on this rainy Friday morning for another, se for another session of Rappler Live Jam. And today we're really excited because we're here with Max, or AKA Max Schneider. Um, he's here in town for a concert with other YouTube favorites like Kurt Hugo Schneider, mm -hmm. Sam Tui at, San at Sunset, yeah. and also Leroy Sanchez, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, hi, how Hi, are you? Great, how are you? Tell me all about your first impressions. When did you get in? We got in uh, yesterday morning. Mm -hmm. it feels, uh, we, we had a long day yesterday. It was good. We got in like 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. And uh, we explored a lot. We went to the uh, the Art in Island. Island Art in Island, right? Oh, Art in did, you take, did you guys take tons of photos there? Yeah. It was so <laughs> rad. We loved it. I got my first... Uh, uh, ook made in the Philippines, which I should have brought Ooh, with me. Yeah, but I'm nice. gonna play it at the show mm -hmm. tomorrow. And I'll, I'll break it in for the first time at, right, the, at right. the show. And uh, yeah, we love it. We've been exploring. We hanging out. It's it's gonna be a, a good time. Yeah, it's been. I was asking Max earlier if he had a taste of our famous Manila traffic. And, oh yeah, definitely yeah. had a taste of the traffic. It's pretty amazing. Driving here is uh, is very different from uh, from even New York. You know, it's like. It's pretty fascinating, but, right, but right. you know, I feel safe. Funny enough, we were in the car, and I was like, "Wow, I can't believe people don't, you know, get more accidents." But it was cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, we're so glad that you guys are here. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's been a very rainy week, so we're glad that you're still enjoying your time. Oh, um, yeah. I, I wanted to ask real quick because I know that you've been in the limelight, you know, for the longest time since you were like a kid, mostly. Um, Tell us about your, your big break or maybe, you know, these milestones in your career that have really made such a huge difference, at, uh, like a turning point. Absolutely. I'd say uh, one one moment for me that, that felt like things were maybe changing in, in a bigger way. I, I worked with uh, Madonna when I was 17. Right, I did this right. shoot with her for Dolce Gabbana. And, uh, and after I started seeing that, you know, it was very surreal to work with her. I was always a huge fan. And, and to, to be with her and to, to sort of have this surreal play date with her for a day where we were just like taking photos all day, uh, it was really, you know, it was, it was both surreal and, and really incredible to just watch her work and, right. and, and to see, you know, someone like that who's still, you know, so prominent in, right. in entertainment and such an incredible uh, force. It was really amazing to see that it's so much about the work for her and it was, it was cool to just get to, you know, soak that up. And when those photos came out, it was, it was definitely something I'd never experienced before. Did you, did you, did she give you any advice about, you know, working the industry I mean I think I think uh, you know what I always tell is this is a funny story where you know we did this whole shoot all day and at the end of the day we were supposed to do one big shot with a group family scene mm -hmm. and she was like ah, I don't want to do that let's go out on the street and they had huge security the whole day so nobody right. could get her out and we go out on the street and uh, and so they couldn't make a perimeter so all the paparazzi come in mm -hmm. and all these people taking photos and, uh, and so after we finish, I go home. The next day, I see the papers, and it says, who's Madonna's new fetus boyfriend? <gasps> and she knew exactly what she was doing. She went on the street, and she knew that she was, she was going right. to you know, make this little story. And I think what, what's amazing is that it's, it's something that you could you, It was very intentional, obviously. But you know, not taking yourself too seriously, right. but taking your work very seriously mm -hmm. is, is something that I think I, I learned from her. And, uh, and she knows that's why she's, people still know her name and she's Absolutely. still playing amazing shows because she knows how to take it seriously when it's, when it's necessary and when it's not. You know, take papar paparazzi photos for <laughs> you know, who's Madonna's and Peter's boyfriend. Yeah, exactly. Um, you've been doing this for a, quite a long while. Um, what do you think is one of the keys to longevity in, in this career, in this industry? I, I mean, the people that I've, I've been very lucky to work with, every single person I've seen I've idolized working with Pharrell Williams was an amazing mm, experience, mm -hmm. and, and seeing Stevie Wonder work with, with them. Um, what I've always noticed is it's, it's never about the fame. It's never about any of those things, because that, the fame goes up and down. You know, you have your high moments where everybody knows your name, and then nobody knows you. And I think what I've learned the most is that it, it's always about the passion. It's always about why you, you started in the first place. It has to be, if you love music, it can only be about the music, not how many people know the music, not how many people know the name, but always about how much you love getting out there and performing for 10 people or 10,000 people. So right. uh, it's, it's, it's staying, uh, staying grounded in that way, I think, and, and also just always loving what you do. I think you can't, you can't lose sight of that. So I want to talk about a bit about the concert that's coming yeah, up. Definitely. Because the fans are really excited for this. Uh, and I'm sure that because a lot of people have seen your videos, especially with Sam and Kurt. Yeah. And we were just talking about Bang Bang and yeah, about yeah, yeah. how all the a lot of the dance moves there are pretty much you guys. Yeah, yeah, totally. Improvising all that. Um, how did you get to start working with Kurt in the first place and oh, Sam as well? It was super funny. You know, we have the same last name. A lot of people think that we're related. Related, right. We're brothers, <laughs> and we're not actually, but we're very, you know, we, we might as well. We, we, we feel like family. We, mm. uh, um, we've known each other for so long now. But 
uh, we actually met through a, a friend of ours. Mm -hmm. uh, went to, he went to college with him, and so I knew about Kurt's work through that, and I started watching videos. And we did a video together with a friend of ours where we were the iPhone band and a cover right. of Stereo Hearts. Right, right. Your house. And we met, and I had known his stuff, and I said, it's really funny, you know, I have the same last name, and we do music. You want to maybe, like, you know, do something together? That'd be awesome. And our first video together was uh, Break Even by the script. That was the right. first one we ever did. And after that, we just sort of never stopped doing stuff together. Right. You know, two years ago when Kurt came here, he was like, yeah, we're not related. Nope. Yeah, yeah, every time. It's, I, I, pretty, I, even more so than people asking if we're related, I'll just get people being like, How, where's your brother? Like, why isn't he with you? <laughs> right, right. And I'm like, yeah, he's, just, he's not. I just like, don't even get into it. But, uh, you know, we, we're very, we, we are very close. So. Great. So you're going to do three songs for us today. Yes, indeed. Yeah, um, perform some songs. Tell us about the first song that you're going to play. Sure, sure. The first one is uh, a song of mine. It's called Gibberish. Uh, featuring Hoodie Allen, I'll try to represent his rap for him. Mm -hmm. um, but this uh, this was a really uh, this was a wonderful song. It's off of my uh, album Hell's Kitchen Angel, which just came out recent mm -hmm. recently, and uh, it was the first song. It actually the YouTube Music Awards uh, presented and, oh, and made this right, video, right. which was uh, definitely one of the craziest videos we ever did. Where it was this forward and reverse concept, uh, which was really wonderful to execute. But the song is actually uh, funny enough. It's it's about a girl who who cheated on me, <gasps> and how okay. uh, you know it was. It's you know if you've been through that, it really. It, it's something that obviously really hurts, and when you really yeah. trust in someone, it's terrible when they betray that trust. But you learn that you know you just have to trust in people, and if they they betray that trust, then that's on them, and they're not the right person for you. So this was right. sort of my way of instead of just writing a song, and I've written other songs where it's more emotional. Like this one was more of like I wanted to just do something a little more upbeat and right. dancey and fun that maybe people don't even know it's about someone cheating on right. me. But yeah, that's what it's about. It's okay. called Jewish. All right, it let's away. get it popping. Go, my boys Ron and Dana. Let's go, baby. All my loving, offers I had a dozen, but I ain't give them nothing, never do it like that. But then I caught you creeping, secrets that you were keeping, like every other weekend, why you do me like that? So now you say it's a kid all back, yeah, that don't mean jack, cause I know the facts. Hey, I swear you must be speaking that crack, I'm getting so fast, yeah, I don't need that. And now, hey, you're running your mouth, but there's nothing that can slow me. But it sounds like gibberish. Like gibberish. Like to talk, but I'm talking back. Shh. Said that she wanted to love me forever, but I was just trying to smash. First saying I'm taking it back, but I'm still bringing it and taking the jazz. We're supposed to say she's making the past. We just met, but I think she arranged her marriage. Like, stop, just hold up. Not the time to get hopes up. I go hard like explosive. Put you back down like a post up. Oh, wait, you saw my post up. I was signed by yours, truly. I swear you said you don't know me. Girl, it looks like you kind of know me. Oh, obsessed. I'm already undressed. I already got it. Best to move away, follow me with that blue case. Shake my head by the toupee, too small like no face. So now, hey, you're in your mouth. Oh, there's nothing that can slow me down. You're messing around, got me thinking that it's time you go. I'm gonna make you 
gibberish. I should have bomb the show. Maybe I should have bomb, but it sounds like gibberish. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we're back, and if you're if you guys are just joining us now, we're here on Rappler Entertainment's Facebook with Max. Um, Max, we were just talking about uh, you know career-defining moments, and I think YouTube was one platform that really helped you. You know, just five years ago, six years ago. Yeah. Um, how do you think that's changed, though? Because I think YouTube has changed a lot in just three or four or five years. Uh, I think it's really cool that um, obviously in this day and age everybody has an entity with YouTube with mm -hmm. all these different social medias that you don't really have to rely on anybody else. You can be singing covers in your bedroom or making right. your own music and you have a place where people can actually listen and can mm -hmm. actually support you. Uh, so I think in that way in the beginning of, of YouTube uh, I think that a lot of people were doing covers including myself and uh, it became a stigma in a funny way. People really? re regarded yeah. it in, uh, in a lesser way than, than other artists, other singers, other bands. And now it's really amazing to see that that sort of these worlds are, are melding together, mm -hmm. which is really uh, which is really beautiful. Some some people who started on YouTube, you know, wonderful people like Troy Sivan, awesome people, mm -hmm. you know, they sort of uh, meld with these mainstream artists, and therefore the the lines are blurred in in a, in a really awesome way that I think uh, is is beautiful because then you know it really allows everybody to feel like whatever way, whatever outlet you have, you can you can put it out there, and uh, and you shouldn't have a stigma of any sort if you're putting out music. Whether it's through you know just YouTube or through you know just a streaming service or you're just putting out with CDs, mm -hmm. like you know it's just as long as you're putting out there, that's a beautiful thing. I think you know um, even just five years from now, it's mm -hmm. hard to see where exactly um, careers in music with YouTube or you know streaming platforms are going to be. Yeah. What do you think is in store? Oh my gosh, it's a great question. I think that you know I think we'll see a lot more different apps coming out mm -hmm. in different ways you know which is which is great even musically is a new app I think a lot of people are using to put themselves right. out there all these wonderful things um, but I think that they'll just be it's 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 wonderful that so many more people will come up through these apps and I think that the competition will be even more intense intense right. but therefore people just have to bring their best material and that I think that that's always a great thing when, when there is more competition when there are people wanting to do it you you, you bring each other together, you support each other, and it inspires you to, to make your best work, so yeah. Yeah, I think um, a lot of the content creators, I, I think especially Kurt, who has really, I think is very well known for innovating a lot with, you mentioned that you guys were doing these these covers with just you know phone apps. Yeah. Um, what was that like for you back in, you know, just kind of discovering these new things to work with and just maybe getting to talk to your fans in a much different way than before? What was that like? Uh, it's incredible. You know, it's amazing that in this day and age, you can you can say to one person who supports you, "Thank you for spending your time," because everybody has, you know, they have their jobs, they have their school, right. they have their work, and as as a as a person who makes music, it's it's always an honor when somebody invites you into their life mm -hmm. with your music because there's so much out there, and I think that being able to actually tweet someone and say, "Thank right. you right. for listening to all this and having all this time." Is, is a really special thing that we didn't have 10 years ago, you know? What's the nicest experience you've ever had with a fan? I'm sure you've had many. I've, yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I've had some really wonderful experiences that um, always uh, reinstilled the, the, the reason why I love doing what I love mm -hmm. doing, you know? Uh, and I had one who came to a show recently in, in Florida in the United States, and, and she said it was our first time meeting, and she'd mm -hmm. been listening to music for like five years, and that she was very sick and that she didn't get to come to a show because she was very sick and she wanted to you know, meet and, and hang out and, and that uh, another girl, her nurse's daughter, had come to one of my shows mm -hmm. and that the nurse's daughter had gotten an autograph and a picture right. and that she only got one and that she, she gave it to her and, 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 and it was this beautiful moment where they bonded and, and then she said that it, it really helped her get through what she was going through, this illness, because she, she had the hope. That, that we could you know hang out someday, which was a, it's a very surreal moment to think that anything that I do matters that much to anybody, and and so uh, when she said that we had this hug, I felt like I knew her my whole life. It was really beautiful the fact that anything I could do, any music, whatever it might be, would help her in any way. So um, that was definitely something that's always going to be very special. It must stay with you over time. Yeah, Absolutely. definitely. Right. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's it, very 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 beautiful. Well, we're excited for you to make new memories with your Filipino fans. Oh, yeah, I Filipinos? think you're meeting a yeah, few maybe. of them. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, 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 very awesome, soon. Yeah. I'm right. very excited. Yeah, we're going to all. Okay, um, you're doing a second song. Yes, yeah, it's yeah. lights down low. Yes, very very. Tell us vibe. about this one. Very sure. different vibe. Yes, this is a very special song to me. It's uh, it's, it's probably one of the the most special to me. 
Uh, it's about you know love of my life and and just uh, that feeling when you when you know that that this person that you're with you're meant to be with. So is it tough to be that. you know to be so vulnerable and open because so much of your music it really is who you are and you know no strings Absolutely. attached. Absolutely, yeah. I think yeah. as I've as I've uh, grown older and, and written more music, the the the, the more I, I write, the more uh, I make it a priority to be transparent in whatever I'm writing. Mm -hmm. I really want it to be you know, the most honest it can be because uh, I find that when I write something that's that's the most honest, maybe the most vulnerable place, uh, hopefully it connects to people in, in, the, in the deepest way. And sometimes that's scary to write something uh, to, to open up about whatever that may be. Right. Uh, but it's the most rewarding when somebody else truly connects with it more so than anything else. Great, we're excited awesome. to hear it. I hope you enjoy this. Here we go. Yeah. in your head and you just look so beautiful just like you were an angel and can I stop the flow of time can I swim in your divine cause I don't think I'll ever leave this place and no turn the lights, turn the lights on Dancing in your bare feet, just like we're in a movie. Grab my hand and we're chasing the train. I catch you looking back at me, running through a cloud of steam. Can I stop the flow of time? Can I swim in your divine? Cause I don't think. If you guys are just joining us now on Rappler Entertainment, we're live with Max. And um, don't don't forget, he has a concert with the YouTube favorites, Leroy Sanchez, At Sunset, Sam Tui, and Kurt Hugo Schneider. You may have seen their video collabs in the last few years. There's There's been quite a lot. And I think you've had some of those one-take one, um, one take, 
one shot. Yeah, yeah, lots of yeah, one take videos. Those are amazing. Thank you very much. How long do those take to, I oh, mean, they're depends. one take, so yeah, it's no. a song. But. I mean, you know, the first one we did, uh, we always talk about how whenever we go for one of those, we always try to one-up it and mm -hmm. do something a little more challenging each yeah. time. And sometimes it'll take 12 hours, sometimes it'll take 16 hours. And, 16 and hours. And it won't even, yeah. and we won't get it to the last take. You know, we'll be going all day. And, and there's times, I think with every shoot pretty much, if we don't have the point in the day where we're like, I don't know if we're gonna actually be able to pull this off, then it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's gonna be special, you know? Right. So so we've we've pretty much had one of those every time. <laughs> and there have been right. moments where we're like, I don't know if we, maybe this is the day that we don't get to actually get a take. Um, but we've been very lucky and each time, Maybe it's 16 hours in and we finally right. get the last take and that's it. So they're very challenging, but they're always worth it. Well, one thing I'd like to ask is, because you're all musicians collaborating on this, I'm sure everybody has a ton of ideas. Mm -hmm. Has it ever happened that uh, something that you guys were doing, uh, someone suggested something that's completely not in the original plan and ended up working great? Oh, yeah. We've definitely had to, to kind of roll with the punches mm -hmm. and, and figure stuff out on the day. You mm -hmm. know, I think... Uh, uh, one of those was we did a medley of Maroon Five songs, where it was like a live lyric video, and we were fig we didn't we figured out everything the day of in this house, and and there were certain moments where you know something would fall down or whatever else, and it just took one thing to ruin a take, like to not make it a thing, you know. So so in in that situation, I think there was a, a couple things where we had to move things around, right. you know, after doing like six or seven takes, and uh, and it was uh, you know definitely at the time we were all a little frustrated, but it was worth it in the end. Have you ever got to meet? I, I'm sure you have some of the people whose songs that you've you know previously covered, and did you guys get to talk about that? Absolutely, yeah. You know, one of my favorite people in the world is is Ed Sheeran. He's he, I think mm. he's uh, you know not only an incredible artist, but somebody that I always look up to in the way that I love how humble he is mm -hmm. to this day. You know, I met him almost five years ago right. as a fan at a show, just outside of a show. He was opening for a band called Snow Patrol, mm -hmm. and uh, we went up to him afterward, and he invited us out to a bar and all these things. He's like, you guys should come That's hang so out. So nice. He was a very yeah. nice dude. And then, you know, years later, uh, Hoodie Allen, who's on my song Gibberish, mm -hmm. he did a feature on one of his songs. So we were at his uh, Los Angeles show, and Ed came out to perform the song with him. And we were backstage, and, and you know, I went up to him, not thinking he'd remember me anything. And he did, which was really cool. Oh. But even more so, it was really cool to see that this guy, five years later, with, you know, the massive fame and the songs and whatever else, there was not a thing that's changed about him in, in the ways that matter. Right. And, uh, and so, you know, I, I didn't even talk about covering songs or anything like that, but it was really cool because it's, it's always awesome to be a fan of a uh, musician or a band where the people are nice people because uh, it's nothing right. better than that. If they're Absolutely. jerks, I mean, you don't really want to be a fan. That yeah, kind of sucks. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, listening to what you've been saying, it's very important to you to stay yourself. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, is mm -hmm. there, uh, you know, have there been moments that challenged you um, about oh, yeah. that throughout your career. Oh yeah, I think uh, a while back, one of my best friends, her name is Madeline, she's mm -hmm. a very wonderful human, and she's been one of my best friends for a very long time, and we were at college in NYU in New York, and it was right after I'd done the Madonna thing, mm -hmm. and uh, that was really a time in my life where I had a big head, I was very, uh, I was a little egotistical about it, and someone asked me, like, oh, I heard there's some like famous person staying on the top floor, and I was like, oh yeah, it's me, and it was mm -hmm. like, I was a real jerk, and I walked outside, and she slapped me in the face, <gasps> Full out. Like, slap. for real? Oh, yeah, full yeah. out. Yeah, slap. Full slap. Made the sound. Whatever. <laughs> and uh, and she was like, you're becoming something that I, I don't like, and I don't want to be your oh. friend if you're like that. And that was, you know, someone who's still so special to me this day, and that was the that was the true wake-up call. And Do anyway, you think you needed that slap? I absolutely yeah. needed that slap. I was never the same. After that, I was never <laughs> the same. So. But I think it's something that, yeah, any things like that, any anything that you, you think is uh, a success or whatever it might be, um, you have to you have to keep yourself in a in a place. You have to be realistic about it, and you have to be you have to be humble about it because it is easy to to have uh, you know people sometimes build yeah. you up to be something. For sure. Uh, and I think that y you have to always realize that you know your family, your friends, and the people that support you are the ones that really matter. We we do have a question, one question from a fan who's okay. asking, what do you have yet to tick off your bucket list? Oh man, lots yeah. lots of stuff. I, yeah. I'm I'm definitely an adventure junkie, so I just went skydiving for the first time recently. <gasps> How was which that? Which is amazing. Yeah. It was it was awesome. The one thing I always say is that Did my you guy, guys go with him? They didn't go. No. no. <laughs> they will. Next time. Do you guys want to go skydiving? <laughs> we're going again. Yeah. The guy who was going, he we're going up the plane and he was playing Fruit Ninja the whole time <laughs> on his phone. Did I was that like, make Yo, you homie, nervous? we're about to jump <laughs> out this plane. Can you not play Fruit Ninja right now? <laughs> right. But he ended up being I realized that I probably want the guy who plays Fruit Ninja because he's so confident yeah. in Yeah. Was it so it was a tandem. Yeah, it was a tandem right, one. Right. Yeah. Well, one thing I'd love to eventually build up the courage right. to jump out by myself. Uh, that'd be cool. Uh, lots of things like that, bungee jumping, things like that. And uh, I'd love to, you know, work with Stevie Wonder. That would mm -hmm. be incredible. And uh, lots of bucket list stuff. I think 
I, and I would guess personally for you in terms of your music, there is, there's so much you've done and yet you're still super young. There's a lot ahead of you. What are you still working on? I think it's always so much to work on. I think uh, for me, I, uh, I always just want to challenge myself. Whatever's the, you know, I can always be a better singer, a better musician. I can always, uh, especially the writing. I think songwriting right. is the thing that I always try to push myself harder with and, and to get to a point where whatever the story is I'm trying to portray is completely honest to whatever that story was. Uh, and we have one more song. Yes. Uh, tell us about this song. Sure, yeah. This is a yeah. song on the record. It's called Basement Party. I did it with an amazing artist named John Bellion, mm -hmm. who I'm a big fan of as well. Um, and uh, we both grew up in New York City. We grew up in, in New York. And, and as a kid, I'm, I'm a, I'm a fun-sized human. There's a lot of fun-sized humans here in the Philippines, which is awesome. Dana and I like that. We're both <laughs> fun-sized humans. So when we used to go to, you know, I used to go to you know clubs in New York, I was always tiny, so I couldn't see above all the t tall guys. I was right. like right at their butts and stuff, and I couldn't talk to people. So I like to have house parties and stuff. I like having right. parties in my house. And and so this uh, this song is all about just you know having the party in your place, and you don't have to go to the, the the cool thing. You can have your own cool thing. And we actually just have been in the U.S. We've been doing this basement party tour where we we wanted to bring the song to life, and we yeah. had people submit their basements to oh, us, and we right. did about ten shows in people's basements all across the country, just showing up to their basements. Was it a big surprise? Were they like? Oh. I mean, yeah. it, some people, yeah, yeah, yeah some yeah. people. There were, and we had some surprises too. But it was uh, it was it's really remarkable because it was the most intimate experience we've done. Uh, uh, in you know actual people's basements, meeting their families, right. playing shows for them. So uh, this song definitely is very special to us. And I we think that's time. that's one thing that's great about you having been on YouTube is this connection to to the fans. Yeah, that, absolutely. Uh, that then informs how you you know think about how you would like to perform in the future and and think of little things like these that help definitely. a lot. Oh yeah, right? absolutely. It's 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 the most important because you know you think a lot of people will bring up uh, big numbers and whatever else. And sure, like, oh yeah. cool, that's the thing. And it always reminds you that those big numbers are just individual people. Each number is an individual person. You right. have to appreciate each individual person because, you know, if you don't, then they could be gone. There's too many, right. too many amazing, you know, bands, artists, whatever out there. You have to be appreciative. So just a reminder for Max's fans, don't forget there's a big concert um, July 9 at the Smart Araneta Coliseum with Max and a lot of other YouTube favorites. Uh, thank you so much for joining thank us, you, you guys. Yeah, thank you. Awesome, I hope baby. you had a great time. Oh, it's so great. Um, take it away. Yeah, thank, thank you very you. much. Awesome. Let's do it, baby. Basin party. Send it off right. She's the middle class princess getting dressed. She's a hostess and a waitress, but she requested the day shift. So she took the train from Brooklyn with her friends. She wants to show me love. Some of my people, yeah, she been recruiting and scouting. Oh, yeah. She got some girlfriends from Soho. She showed them the pictures they bought it. Oh, yeah. There's a promoter supposedly told her that one of was popping. No way. Cut that. I'm having a basement party. Oh, yeah, boy, yeah, boy, yeah, boy, yeah, boy, yeah. And I'm having a basement party. Boy, yeah, boy, yeah, boy, yeah, boy, yeah, boy, yeah.
that supposedly told her that one of us popping. No way, no way. Cut that. I'm having a basement party. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Rapper. Much love.